Good afternoon, everyone. Today our parish community is gathered to celebrate Eucharist on this, the second Sunday of Lent. Last week, we heard of our Lord Jesus' fast in the desert. Today, Moses and Elijah appear alongside Jesus in splendor on Mount Tabor. They too fasted for 40 days in preparation for their holy missions. With the Lord Jesus, with the lawgiver Moses, and with the great prophet Elijah, together we have splendid companions for this 40-day fast. We worship as one body in Christ, and so I extend a warm welcome to all who are gathered here today, especially any visitors. As always, our time together is sacred, so I ask you to take a moment right now to make sure to silence all cell phones and other electronic devices. And thank you. And now, let us stand and share Christ's welcome with one another. And as we begin our celebration, please join in singing our gathering song, Bound on Your Worship Aid, 40 Days and 40 Nights. Forty days and forty nights, you were fasting in the wild. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we gather this day to celebrate the sacred mysteries of this Eucharist, we continue our journey ever more deeply into this beautiful season of Lent. Tonight we are aware of how deeply and how wonderfully God blesses us, what God shares with us each and every day. And we're called to return that, to turn that over to God. As we gather this night, we begin by asking for the blessing of God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ. 
Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put to Abraham to the test, called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, where you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He reached out, took a knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your only beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as the holocaust in the place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly. I will make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky in the sands on the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in, your, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks. You 
have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving. <clears throat> and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for all of us, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn Jesus, Christ Jesus, it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to you. be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Eliza appeared to them along with Moses, <clears throat> and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a cloud over them. And from the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, 
He charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the first reading this evening, we encounter our friend Abraham, the one who is transformed. His story begins with him having a slightly different name, Abram. Abram and his wife Sarai, and they're transformed by God's goodness. God forms a covenant with them and tells them that their descendants will be as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sea, as the grains of sand on the seashore. And both of them wonder because of their advanced age and the fact that they're childless, how this could possibly be. And God gives them the gift of a son, Isaac, who's at the very center of the reading that we hear tonight. Abram is changed by God's goodness. Abram becomes Abraham. Sarai, changed by God's blessing. Sarai becomes Sarah. And then, of course, as I said, there's Isaac, this wondrous gift that they've been given by God. They recognize how deeply blessed they are. Two people well beyond the age when having a child would be a normal course of things. That having a child in their culture was something to be prayed for and longed for because it meant the continuation of a family name, a family line. What a beautiful gift they were given in Isaac. So deeply touched are they by God. So trusting are they of God's goodness that Abraham, when asked to sacrifice Isaac, is willing to do this. He recognizes this is a gift from God and he's called to give it back if that's what God calls for. God stays his hand. But Abraham will always recognize the tremendous gift that Isaac is. Will go on to become a father of a nation of many. What a wondrous gift they are given. And how that gift impacts people for generations to come. And then in the gospel, we have Peter, James, and John. They're at the very beginning of their lives as disciples, and Jesus invites them up Mount Tabor, and they witness something beyond their ability to fully comprehend. It's very clear. Peter, James, and John are so bumfuzzled by what happens that Peter thinks, well, we'll just make tents. That's what we know to do. It'll keep things here. We'll stay here. We'll remain in God's presence. We just really don't understand what's going on here but we know that it's special and beautiful. We recognize Moses and Elijah, so let's just stay here. And then after that mysterious experience, there is the cloud, the voice of God the Father speaking. This is my beloved son, listen to him. And they make their way down the mountain and Jesus gives them the instruction after having received this tremendous gift this vision of Moses and Elijah, two of the patriarchs, two of the people who for them are the most important in their life of faith. After the experience of the voice of God the Father thundering forth from the cloud, Jesus tells them, don't tell anybody about it until after the Son of Man has risen from the dead. And we know in three short years' time, that that last part will be brought to its fruition and fulfillment. Jesus will be crucified and he will rise from the dead. And what happens? Peter, James, and John, leaders amongst the disciples who now become the apostles after Easter Sunday, they take what they have been given, this tremendous gift of the vision of the goodness of God, how the power of God radiated through their friend Jesus. 
how they experienced the presence of Moses and Elijah, how they heard the voice of God the Father. They take this tremendous gift and they begin to put it to use to share that gift with other people. We hear shortly after the resurrection, shortly after Jesus encounters them in the upper room, Peter, James, and John, and the others can be found in the temple area singing the praises of God constantly, as it's said in the Acts of the Apostles. They take the gift that they've been given because now it finally makes sense and they share that with other people. And so it has to be in our lives too. What are the gifts that God gives us? How have we been changed or transformed like Abram or Sarai? How has the gift of baptism and the gift of faith that follows and flows from it, how has that changed us? How has the gift of life and faith changed us? How has the gift of who we are, the ingenuity that's in our minds and the love that's in our hearts, how do we use that trusting in God to help change the world? And we do that. We do that. Most of us will do that in very everyday kinds of ways. We do that in the context of family, by the witness of the love, the care, and the devotion that we have for those who are placed in our care. We do that in the context of a parish community, by pooling the gifts that we are and that we have not only to support the ministries and the life of our parish community, but to use those gifts to make a difference in the lives of people around us, in our civic community, in our world community. The call to us is the same as it was to Abraham and to Peter, James, and John, to take the gifts that we've been given by God to put those gifts in God's hands and allow those gifts then to be shared for the benefit of others. Abraham shares the gift of Isaac, who becomes the father of a great nation. Peter, James, and John, they share the gift of the faith that they've been given to change the lives, to touch the lives of so many people. And so it can be and is with us. Now, as I said, most of us do that in the everyday kinds of ways that we live, and we hardly ever recognize it for what it is. But we also know that in our name, as a people of faith, those gifts are gathered and those gifts are used. Those are our monetary gifts. Those are the gifts of our time and our talent. Those gifts are gathered, placed in God's hands, and then broken and shared with our world. This second Sunday of Lent is the time that in our diocese we begin the annual diocesan services appeal, the DSA. The DSA is a way of remembering that we can place our gifts in God's hands and those gifts that God has given us then can be used to touch the lives of hundreds, thousands of people around our diocese and in our world. In the upcoming issue of Faith Magazine that you'll receive, you'll see how diocesan services appeal funds help a program called Alpha in the Ann Arbor area, which is touching the lives of Chinese students there at the University of Michigan. Students who, prior to being there in Ann Arbor, prior to the Alpha experience, had never, ever heard of God. And because of that particular ministry, those Chinese students now are on fire with God's love for them. You'll hear a beautiful, or read a beautiful story about people who work in our Catholic social services agencies to provide counseling, to provide healing, to provide service to people who are hurting. How Catholic social services helps with foster care and with adoption how Catholic Social Services reaches out into the community 
to help refugees to find dignified housing, a way to begin their lives here in our nation so that they become productive people and people filled with faith. You're going to learn how DSA dollars help to benefit adults all around our diocese who are seeking to grow in their life of faith through adult faith formation, Bible study, RCIA, the process by which people become Catholic. You'll learn how DSA dollars support our seminarians and those who are our novices in religious life by providing them with the support they need to undertake their studies and their spiritual formation to become people who will serve us for generations to come. You will learn so much more about how our gifts placed in God's hands through the DSA benefit so many people in so many ways. And so I'm here on behalf of Bishop Boyer and the people of our diocese who benefit, not just people of our diocese, but people of our world who benefit from these DSA-supported ministries to make the annual appeal to all of us. And as a parish, we have responded wonderfully through the years. Last year is a beautiful example of that. So every parish has assigned a goal. Last year we had a goal of $40,600, more or less. By the time everything was said and done, people of our parish community pledged $52,600. That's 129% of the goal. And that's been the experience that I have seen during my eight years here as your pastor. We understand that when we give a little bit of what we have, the gifts that God has given us, and place those in the hands of so many others, that those gifts in turn impact people in powerful, beautiful ways. We get this. So this year, we've got a goal. In case you haven't heard, it's a little bit more expensive to do anything and everything these days. They're just breaking news in case you haven't heard that. So the overall goal for the diocese for the DSA has gone up, and that means that individual parish goals have gone up as well. So our goal for 2024 is $43,600, more or less, an increase of about $3,000 from last year. What I ask you to do is what we've done throughout these years that I've been here. In your bulletin this weekend, you will find the DSA pledge envelope. It really doesn't change much year after year after year. It's pretty simple and straightforward. You can make your gift or your pledge using the pledge envelope, or you can make your gift or your pledge by going online to the DSA website. All that information is contained here on the pledge envelope. Every year I make a pledge, and that allows me to spread things out across 10 or 12 months so that a little bit larger gift is done in little smaller chunks. I encourage and I invite all of you to join me in making a gift to this year's DSA out of gratitude, like Abraham, like Peter, James, and John. They take the gifts that they've been given by God and they place them in God's hands for the benefit of others. So, DSA envelope, obviously people know what to do with this thing, so take it home this weekend and over this next week or few weeks. Prayerfully consider the gift that you and your family would like to make to support this year's DSA. Included also is the updated little pamphlet about DSA ministries and the different ways that our DSA generosity supports ministries all across the diocese. It's a one way to learn more about that. As I said, the March issue of Faith Magazine should be in your mailboxes very shortly, and that will help to put more faces on these stories of these ministries made possible by DSA. But complete the pledge envelope and then return it in the regular collection in one of the white metal drop boxes or drop it off at the parish office or you can mail it. Mail it here to the parish. Don't mail it to the diocese. That can get the recording of gifts a little mucked up. And so send it here to the parish office and we'll take it from there. On behalf of 
Bishop Boyer and the people who work at the diocesan level, thank you for your generosity over these many years of the past and this year as well. More importantly though, on behalf of countless hundreds if not thousands of people whose lives are touched and changed by your DSA generosity, thank you. We never know how when we support the DSA that generosity, that giving of a gift is going to be a gift to somebody else who's in need of counseling or foster care or formation. The list goes on and on and on. The point is that we offer our gifts because we've been given those gifts. We place them in God's hands and we know God takes it from there. Just ask Abraham or Peter or James or John. Together now, we stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayer is one of the three great hallmarks of our Christian journey during the season of Lent. And so let us lift up our hearts to pray for all those who are in need. And so in peace we pray, responding, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, May we never tire of climbing God's holy mountain. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, that they may work together to break down the barriers that keep us from a just and lasting peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our inquirers, our candidates, and our elect, may they persevere in the covenant God is establishing with them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our children who are preparing to receive communion for the first time, may they be transformed by the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the young people of our parish who are preparing for the sacrament of confirmation, may they be prayerfully open to the guidance of the Holy Spirit in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are burdened by illness of body, mind, or spirit, and all who care for them, may they experience the life of Christ within them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have died, especially Jean White, Eric Flancher, Sid Wiesman, Father Francis Mossholder, and all the deceased members of our parish community. May they live with God in glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. At the prayers written in our parish books of intercession, 
and the prayers we hold in our heart will be united in communion with the Holy Spirit, with Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Anne, and with all the saints in light. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, hear the prayers of your people gathered to celebrate this memorial of your everlasting covenant. Keep us always close to you. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As our gifts are presented, please join in singing the cross of Jesus. The words are found in your worship aid and the music is in the hymnal on page 396, 396.
And so pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us. And though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation. And as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all, while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so, filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love, and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy look then we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved son Jesus Christ in whom we too are your sons and daughters Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. And so as he ate with them, he took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. And he broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the cup filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, 
handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that, by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, so they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Earl our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Anne, and with all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, Freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Together now, we pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the words our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn, You Are Mine. The words are in your worship aid. In the hymnal, you can turn to page 2, 627, number 627.
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Look how sunny it still <laughs> is. Yay, God. Yay, God. What a difference it makes. What a beautiful day today. So as you make your way from church on this beautiful day, as always, your missalettes go home with you. The hymnals stay put. Uh, song sheets can be placed in the big wicker basket for recycling. Offertory gifts can be placed in any of the white metal drop boxes located around the perimeter of the church. And thank you for your continued generous support of our parish community and its many ministries and programs. As you take the bulletin, please make sure that you grasp it by the fold. It does include uh, the DSA envelope as well as the DSA pamphlet brochure. And I do have some additional reminders about important events that are coming up. So this is the last weekend to purchase tickets for the Women's Day of Reflection for the women of our parish community. Space is reaching near to capacity, so make sure to purchase your ticket today. Those who attend the 430 Mass, so please, please, please be aware that next Saturday, March the 2nd, this Mass will be where? St. Anne. Where will this Mass be next weekend? St. Anne. Which day? Saturday. And that Saturday only, because of the Women's Day of Reflection, I will be down there. So next Saturday, this Mass moves to St. Anne's. The schedule for Sunday remains the same, 8, 9, 30, 11, 15, and their usual locations. This year's Wednesday soup and bread suppers are being hosted by Olivet Congregational Church right near the campus of the university in Olivet. There is a different speaker each week, and I'm going to be speaking on March the 13th. The free will offering from those evenings helps to benefit food pantries in the Olivet and the Bellevue areas. Don't forget about our two special charitable efforts here in our parish community during the season of Lent. We're partnering with our students in St. Mary's School, and we've set a goal of providing $1,000 to Heifer Project, which seeks to support folks in developing countries by providing an investment of livestock or other agricultural goods to help them to establish a sustainable farm life and to support family life in their communities. So make use of the little bag that was included in last weekend's bulletin. If you didn't get one, there are more little bags on the table in the narthex area, lovingly decorated by the kids in the school. The one I got has a pig, a chicken, and a cow on it, and it's great. Yes, it's going to be a keepsake after I fill it up. So those bags can be used to gather our offering for heifer, and then we'll collect them during Holy Week. The other Lenten project is to help to defray the cost of school lunches for families who need assistance in our parish school. No child has ever refused hot lunch at St. Mary, but sometimes families struggle to meet that cost. So if you'd like to help with that, take one of the envelopes from the display in the gathering space, or well, the display isn't there right now because all the envelopes got taken last week. But if you want to help with that, use any old envelope. Just mark it school lunch project, put your gift in there, and drop it in the regular collection basket or in the collection box. The 2024 Meyer Simply Give winter campaign that benefits our St. Vincent de Paul food pantry here at St. Mary continues through March the 31st at the Meyer here in Charlotte. The first double match day is coming next week, March the 2nd. The other is March the 25th. We need everyone's help with that. Our parish St. Vincent de Paul funds are being stretched farther than ever before. So your help in supporting Simply Give will make a huge difference in helping St. Vincent to serve neighbors in need. Please be aware that the parish offices here at St. Mary will be closed for the entire day this Monday, February the 26th. And out in the gathering space, you'll find a new set of tags for the dresser mission are available. Take one or two of those tags, purchase a suggested item, and then return it to the dresser. What a beautiful way of helping to support the gift of life by supporting a mama who is bringing a baby into the world. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace and glorify the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn, Turn to the Living God.
The words are in your worship aid and in the hymnal in number 408. God will turn to you. Have mercy, O oh Lord, on your people. In your goodness, wipe away our guilt. Wash us clean, free us to become your living song of praise. Turn, turn to the living God, the God. God will turn to you. 